Hello everyone, I'm Rania, an alumni at the Knowledge Society and thank you so much for taking the time to view my exhibit. I know you're all busy students putting in time for so many things like school, university and maybe your scientific aspirations. Now, I want you to imagine for all the time that you put in, you're only going to be getting 3 to 5 percentage back, which sounds scary. Now, if I were confronted with such a problem, I'd for sure change up my methods, you know, experiment differently to see what makes that a higher percentage, and I'm sure you'd do too. But what's shocking is that this is exactly what's happening in food right now. You see, cows, they're not the best at what they're meant to do. They're terrible at converting their feed to calories, and so if we were to be considering them a technology, they're pretty inefficient. But that's not it. Animal agriculture is also responsible for wastage of resources, you know, the ongoing cow genocide, and even world hunger. In fact, food production accounts for 25% of the climate crisis. Now, current solutions are all founded. Now, current solutions like veganism are all founded on a scarcity mindset, where we talk about reducing our consumption and stuff, and they all rely on mass behavior change, which, trust me, isn't possible. Now, the solution to all of this is to rebuild the system instead of improving upon it using emerging technology. And one such technology which all my research is centered in is called cellular agriculture. Now, cellular agriculture is basically used to describe methods and processes that use cell cultures to produce agricultural products. For example, for meat, we start with a tiny little muscle stem cell replicating the cow's body environment using an extracellular matrix, and that's what you call it, and giving it nutrients through a culture medium and slowly developing it to muscle tissues. My main project, however, is focused on lab-grown dairy. Now, if you think about milk, it's really just water, sugars, and proteins. And the most com prominent compound that makes milk, well, milk, is whey and casein. So if we are able to make these in a lab, we are quite literally going to be getting the exact same milk. Now, for this, we use the yeast. To this yeast, we engineer and add a circular piece of DNA which we call a plasmid. And the plasmid is essentially where we get a little sneaky by giving some additional instructions to the cell. Now the instructions that we are trying to give is to produce our main milk proteins, which is whey and casein. Now we edit the plasmid to, you know, include this gene through a process called DNA cloning. Now the plasmid has these various sites called restriction sites, and these are places where it's safe to make a cut. And the way we cut these is using enzymes known as restriction enzymes, which are like itty bitty molecular scissors. Now we can insert our gene and what we get is known as a recombinant DNA. Now, as our superpower yeast feeds on sugars through fermentation, it's going to convert it to proteins. Now, my project was focused on simulating DNA cloning, like making cuts, inserting a gene and so on. I did this through a research and design platform called Benchling. Now, my end product was a plasmid that coded for a fluorescence protein in yeast. And the reason I did this is to apply the knowledge that I had gained over the past couple months. So here's a basic overview of my project. So this is the plasmid that I have constructed. And as you can see, it can uh, this whole gene right here gives it the ability to produce the fluorescence protein for yeast. So yeah, I did this on Benchling, which is basically a research and design platform for life sciences. Now, if this project was done for that purpose and like in scale, we could have up to 97% fewer greenhouse gas emissions and up to 97% land and 90.9.6 less water. Whoa, crazy, right? Along, to my, along with my biotech project, I've also been involved in sustainability and the Sustainability and Health Advisory Council of Perfect Day Foods, alongside people like Anne Wenman and Leonardo DiCaprio. And I'm also spreading awareness about this crisis as well as the solution through my cellular agriculture wiki, which I created, and my ongoing medium series, which goes into the ins and outs of cellular agriculture, their need for it, and so and so. Thank you so much for viewing my exhibit.